hello everybody i welcome you to the presentation on the analysis of uh, determinate structures i am dr s raviraj working as professor in the department of civil engineering of sjce mysuru will be starting the presentations today well uh, this is an initiative taken by the vishweshwara technological university vtu belgaum india under vtu e shikshana program this course is for the fourth semester students of civil engineering and this is designed as an outcome based education course the course code of this particular subject is 18 cv42 as per the syllabus of vtu titled as analysis of determinate structures regarding the course learning objectives under the ob based program so we intend to see that the students understand different forms of structural system understand the concept of the influence line diagrams and moving loads when we talk about structures like bridges to determine the slopes and deflections of beams and trusses and finally to analyze arches and cables now this syllabus of the course comprises of five modules module 1 is about introduction and analysis of plane trusses which is made up of structural forms conditions of equilibrium compatibility conditions degree of freedom linear and non linear analysis static and kinematic indeterminacies of structural systems it also constitutes module 1 influence lines where we deal with the concepts of influence lines the influence line diagrams for reactions shear force and bending moment for determinate beams and ild for axial forces and ild for axial forces hello madidine bartha illwa okay uh ild for axial forces in determinate trusses and numerical problems module 2 comprises of moving loads and we try to deal with examples in determinate beams where we try to make use of the influence line diagrams to calculate the reactions the bending moments and shear force in such determinate beams apart from that we also try to analyze determinate trusses for rolling loads using ild to determine the axial loads in various members of the truss and the interest would be to calculate the maximum values the absolute maximum values okay in beams this what we are trying to talk about as well as trusses 
Now, module 3 comprises of deflection of beams. And uh, we have basically two methods in this discussion under this module. One is the moment area method, one of the popular methods where we have a small derivations, Moore's theorems, sign conventions, application of moment area method for determinate prismatic beams, prismatic in the sense where the cross section remains same over the entire length. We also have beams of varying cross section and uh, what we mean here is the beam has different depths or different lengths and we also talk about use of moment diagram by parts. So this is the first method we talk about in module 3. We also have the second method in module 3 which is the conjugate beam method. Again a relatively popular method to find the deformation in the beam. So concepts of real beam and imaginary beam that is conjugate beam, the conjugate beam theorems, application of conjugate method to determine of the deformation in beams of variable cross section in the sense that beams having different depths or different lengths. So the intention of module 3 would be to determine the translations and the rotations that is in short deformation in beams due to given set of loads. Coming to module 4 we use the energy principles and energy theorems. Energy principles is a very popular approach that we talk about in uh, uh, especially structural engineering. It is a very strong concept where we can use this to solve real complex problems and at this level we are trying to introduce basic energy theorems and how you can use it to find the deformation in beams. So module 4 basically comprises of principle of virtual displacements, strong concepts, principle of virtual forces, strain energy and complementary energy. Strain energy due to different types of loads like what is the energy stored in the body when it is subjected to axial forces, bending, shear and torsion. Then we talk about deformation of determinate beams and trusses using total strain energy. We also have deflections at a point of application of single load, Castiglino's theorem and its application to estimate the deflection of trusses, bend frames, special applications where we talk about dummy unit load method. So the discussion in module 4 would be basically to use energy principles and energy theorems to find the deformation in beams and trusses. Coming to the last module that we have here, it's about arches and cable structures. These are simple special structures that you can see in many structures in and around. Under this arches we have a discussion on 3 inched parabolic and circular arches where the profile would be either parabolic or circular and regarding the supports yeah it can be at the same level or it could be at different levels and the intention of doing such kind of examples would be to find the internal forces in terms of normal thrust, radial shear and bending moment. Coming to the cables, so the discussion would be 
to analyze cables carrying two different types of loads the first one being point loads it could be one it could be two or it could be three and cables carrying udl distributed over the horizontal span we also have discussions on length of cables when the supports are at same level and at different levels and a very important uh, discussion to close with that would be using stiffening trusses or girders in case of suspension cables so overall we have five modules in this particular uh, discussion in modules module 1 it is basically some general introduction followed by concepts on influence lines and in module 2 application of influence lines to solve numerical examples of simple beams determinant beams and trusses module 2 would be talking about finding deformations in beams that is in terms of deflections and slopes using two methods that is moment area methods and the cast, uh, conjugate beam method coming to module 4 we are talking about strain energy and theorems of strain energy to find the deformation in beams and module 5 would be to analyze arches and cable structures at the end of the course okay the student should be able to identify different forms of structural systems should be able to construct influence line diagrams and analyze beams and trusses subjected to different types of moving loads understand the energy principles and energy theorems and its applications to determine the deflections in trusses and beams and to determine the stress resultants in case of arches and cables so the student should be able to do all these things okay at the end of the course now the prescribed textbooks okay that we have here in the syllabus are cs ready basic structural analysis publishers tata mcgraw then muttu azmi vijanand maganti basic structural analysis ik international publishing publishing home house then bavika tss structural analysis vikas publishing house private limited so these are the three prescribed textbooks coming to the uh, reference books so we have hibelar rc structural analysis printais hall devdas menon structural analysis narosa publishing house prakash rao ds structural analysis university press private limited regarding the uh, the course itself uh, so we have dr c ramakrishna gowda professor and head department of civil engineering maharaja institute of technology mit mysore who is the faculty advisor in the board of civil engineering connected with this course and regarding the course experts as per the different modules i will be covering modules 1 and 2 as i mentioned earlier i work as i am ravi rajas i work as professor of civil engineering at sjc mysore now module 3 will be dealt with dealt by professor b g naresh kumar who is the principal of maharaja institute of technology mysore module 4 will be discussed by professor kiran mali patil 
Assistant Professor of Civil Engineering at KLE Belgavi and the last module module 5 will be discussed by Professor H.S. Nanda Principal Bangalore Technological Institute of Technology Bangalore now connected with uh, this course uh, we have two courses which are prerequisites for this particular course the first one is engineering mechanics which you all have undergone in your earlier semester uh, the most important uh, aspect that we need to understand from the point perspective of uh, analysis of determined structures is the resolution of forces generally as we know if you have an inclined force we normally try to resolve into components so resolution of forces is an important thing that we need to uh, keep in mind and the second one would be the flow of forces as to how the forces will flow especially in case of uh, beams we have talked about calculating the reactions support reactions so those basic concepts okay have to be revised and that will be used in this particular discussion now the next course which is quite important is the course on strength of materials and uh, I hope this is a real exhaustive course and uh, the basic uh, difference when we try to study engineering mechanics and strength of materials is when we start with engineering mechanics we try to make an assumption saying that the body is a rigid one that is all bodies are rigid okay just that's just an assumption we don't talk about deformations in mechanics because we are interested to know how the force will flow through a body whereas in strength of materials okay even small deformations are really important for us so whatever may be the kind of deformation happening in the structure we try to calculate these deformations and then quantify them as strains and then convert them to stresses and in strength of materials basically uh, we try to take a, a material okay uh, in the form of some uh, shapes okay and then try to subject it to different types of uh, forces like it could be uh, compression tension it could be bending it could be shear it could be torsion and then we try to study uh, the effects of these forces individually so we'd like to know what is the how exactly a material will behave under different types of loads all these are very very important to characterize the material okay where we try to know the material properties now coming to the topic itself analysis of determinate structures so to begin with let's try to understand what is a structure a structure is one which comprises of many components or parts connected to perform an intended function as you can clearly see when you just try to look at any structure say a simple building that we are trying to talk about you can identify different parts which are connected and the structure is performing some purpose like it's trying to resist some loads okay or it's trying to do some task okay it could be a machine even machine can be treated as a structure so we are trying to take structures which have different types of parts 
and all these parts could be subjected to different types of loadings okay and then okay we try to deal with that here in this particular course some of the components that you can have in a building are like beams slabs columns foundations stairs okay these are some important components that you can think of and if you see this picture so you can understand that you got many components for example starting from here you got reinforced concrete floor slab and that sits on beams so as you can clearly see beams are horizontal members okay and you also have another beam big beam which you can call it as a girder so girder is also primarily a beam but of bigger size so the vertical members are called as columns so we just try to look at the next slide so same thing a different uh, picture that we have here so here you can even see the foundation that is normally placed below the column so eventually whatever load that is applied on the slab okay will be carried on to the beams okay maybe from uh, secondary beams there is minor beams to major beams or primary beams or girder and from there it goes to the column and from the column it flows to the foundation and from foundation it goes to the soil so you can have a simple idea okay about a structure okay so this is a very common structure or a building that you are trying to see here now coming to the loads that we have so generally a structure will be subjected to different types of loads the most common one would be what we call as dead load so dead load is also called as the gravity load and uh, especially uh, in most of the structures okay the self weight okay plays a major component okay or part of the total load okay that the structure should resist for example if you are trying to take a reinforced concrete structure the total weight of the structure generally outweighs the load it is supposed to carry for example uh, in a normal building reinforced concrete structure okay the total weight when you just try to compare that with the dead load okay dead load comprises of at least 60% or 65% of the total load so the dead loads are normally very enormous then we have the live loads live loads are nothing but the loads that act on the structure which come and go it's not permanent it's temporary dead loads are permanent whereas live loads do come and go on the structure relatively small when compared to the total dead load then you have got the wind loads uh that is wind the effect of wind on structure uh, understand the dead loads and live loads are normally acting in the vertical direction whereas the wind loads are lateral loads which act uh on the side of the building and especially the effect of wind loads is more severe when the as the height of the uh, structure increases normally very small structures like about two floors well within uh, surrounded by buildings so we don't foresee uh, the uh, effect of wind to be critical but however if you are trying to look at very tall structures yeah wind loads are very very critical so one has to consider the effect of wind while analyzing the structure earthquake loads again are important especially in regions where uh, it is prone to earthquakes so basically the ground shakes initially it is at rest when the earthquakes or shakes so the bottom of the building is may is disturbed or is trying to have you have a jerk back and forth okay and you can expect that uh, it's going to cause some kind of uh, 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 stresses 
or it will try to lead to a development of some internal forces and deformation structures and uh, it has to be accounted properly. So you also have the snow loads especially when the temperature temperatures go below the freezing point. So there are there is a possibility that uh, snow may get accumulated on top of buildings. So we need to account the snow loads and if you are trying to have the structures in the sea you can also expect the wave loads hitting on the structures. So you can think of some varied kind of uh, loads and uh, uh, which the structure would be uh, trying to uh, resist and in turn we need to uh, analyze the structure to, ca to calculate the internal forces because of these things, these loads. Uh, the intensity of these loads uh, obviously depends on the type of building. For example, uh, uh, we just talk about a residential building. The live load recommended would be something like about 2 kN per meter square as per uh, IS 875 okay, part 2. However, if you are trying to take a commercial building, uh, it could go up to 4 kN per meter square or 5 kN per meter square. So basically though the uh, loads okay, are identified uh, as seen on the left hand side, the intensity of these values basically depend on uh, the type of buildings okay, that you are trying to consider for the analysis. Okay, it's not the same for all types of buildings. We also have industrial buildings, we also have special structures. So the, the loads can vary for these uh, different uh, types of buildings. Uh, just to uh, uh, make things interesting, I am trying to put some uh, sketches here or pictures okay, of uh, some tall structures here. I think uh, the current constructed world's tallest structure as you all know Burj Khalifa is on the left side of your screen. Okay, it, it right now uh, uh, it's claimed that the height of this uh, uh, structure is something like uh, 830 meters. Okay, then you have uh, the Petronas Towers, Twin Towers in Malaysia. So the height of these Twin Towers is uh, 450 meters. Uh, we also have uh, uh, the Shanghai Tower on the left hand side of your screen, uh, which is something like 630 meters. Okay, and uh, uh, on the right side, you know, you can recognize it's the uh, Eiffel Tower in Paris. Uh, these uh, towers are very uh, quite tall. Okay, as we just uh, saw in the previous slide, the height of uh, uh, the uh, Burj Khalifa was something like about 830 meters. Uh, it's something like about uh, building uh, 250 to 270 storied structure. So you can think that these structures are really, really tall. And when you're trying to design such kind of structures, evaluation of uh, estimation of uh, loads, appropriate loads, okay, acting on the structure is very, very important. Like I told you, the wind, effect of wind. Okay, is very very critical in these kind of uh, structures, and even the presence of uh, the tall structures around uh, the, this structure will also try to influence okay the wind, which has to be accounted properly. Some micro modeling can be done, wind tunnel testing can be done to identify the. Uh, effects of all these things. So just to have some glimpse of uh, tall structures, uh, different types of uh, uh, structures again, statues of late, uh, you can see uh, 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 these kind of statues. I think the left one is quite old, Statue of Liberty, it uh, is 93 meters, stands at 93 meters, whereas on the right hand side we have got the Statue of Unity in Gujarat. Okay, it's the height of this is 182 meters. 
So again, it's a challenging thing to uh, construct these kind of uh, statues also, not only buildings. Now coming to a different type of uh, structure. So we have the bridges. And, and, and I think the world's, uh, this is one of the famous uh, uh, bridge okay, that we have, that is Golden Gate Bridge in uh, the uh, United States of America. Uh, if I am correct, the distance between uh, uh, this tower and this tower okay, is something like 1250 meters around that. So it is something like 1.25 kilometer is the distance between these two towers, more than 1.25 kilometers. It is a, a huge suspension bridge that you have here. You also have uh, uh, the very interesting uh, uh, bridge in uh, Paris or France, if I am correct, Milan. Okay, so uh, this the profile of this bridge is not straight, it is curved. And uh, another interesting thing about this bridge is uh, look at the uh, cables, it's a cable straight bridge. And uh, uh, some of the towers that you see here are much taller than the Eiffel Tower. So again that is one more interesting bridge that you have here, it's a arch bridge. Okay, and uh, important to notice that the arch should be supported on very strong uh, uh, abutments, okay, the rocks, something like that. Okay, so uh, that's where you can expect the entire uh, thrust to be transmitted. So the way in which one designs these kind of structures, again, uh, we need to understand challenging. Another different type of structures like dams, Okay, so these structures are constantly in contact with water. So uh, the permeability plays a very important role, especially in concrete structures. So apart from that, the internal forces, okay, that would be present in the dams should also be recognized and analyzed and designed appropriately. So this is a curved. Uh, a dam or an arch dam, the arch is in plan. So these are some other uh, simple uh, dams that you are trying to have uh, in Karnataka. So just to make you understand, so when you say structures, it need not be buildings. We are trying to talk about structures of different types here. Now coming to a totally different uh, engineering. So you are trying to have an aircraft here. So you can understand that to design this again we need to do talk about structural analysis. But the structure that you are talking about here is an aeroplane. So automobile engineering, yes you need the analysis of structures. This is again a mechanical engineering uh, product. You have a robo arm trying to do some kind of work. So you can think of even analysis of structures or analysis of this machine, yeah, it's required. Again, that's an uh, automobile, okay, F1 racing. Okay, so you can understand that even automobile engineering it could be aeronautical, mechanical, automobile. Yeah, we have to talk about structural analysis. So it's not that only civil engineering discipline requires structural analysis. Even these disciplines, other than that you can think of polymer science, okay, you can think of biotechnology, okay, so if you're talking about especially instrumentation, bio bio biomedical instrumentations, yeah, you need to think of uh, uh, structural analysis. Now let's talk about the objectives of structure analysis. Now there are two objectives, prime objectives that I would uh, put it here. The first one is to find the internal force in various members of the structures. As we said that a, a building comprises of many components like slabs, beams, 
the columns, the foundations, they're all connected. And it is subject to some kind of loads, dead loads, live loads, wind loads, earthquake loads. Okay, so they are acting on the structure. Correct, they are acting on the structure. Now, just try to check the components. The components will develop internal forces. Okay, you can expect uh, the loads to be action and uh, the internal forces to be the reactions. So, there would be internal reactions okay in all these structural uh, members okay so the objective you know the objective is to find these forces okay that is internal forces the next one is other objective equally important objective to find the deformation in the various members of the structure so you can assume that this is these are two sides of a coin one side you have got the internal forces on the other side you have got the deformations you are trying to calculate these two things when the structures are subjected to various kinds of loads okay where it's trying to perform okay trying to resist some loads you can expect these to develop and we would like to calculate these things that is internal forces and deformations in the structure now what you are looking on the screen okay is a simple uh, three dimensional structure why am i saying it as a three dimensional uh, because you can clearly uh, look at that so uh, any point that you try to uh, consider for example the coordinates of a joint here will have three components okay the x component the y component and the z component so the shape of the structure is basically it's a three dimensional structure Okay, and it is subject to uh, some loads that you can clearly see. Okay, they are acting, uh, the, the gravity loads acting in uh, vertical directions. You can have lateral loads which act on the structure, on the sides. It could be along uh, this direction, it could be along this direction. So you can expect the, the loads to be acting in all the three directions okay, of this kind of structure. So we also call this as a skeletal structure okay or a framed structure or a wired structure uh, here please understand that uh, the slab which is present in the horizontal plane uh, is generally taken off and then the load of that is uh, transmitted transferred or transmitted to the adjoining beams in an appropriate manner so when you are doing analysis of this structure Okay, this slab effect of slab is generally not considered when you are trying to analyze it as a skeletal structure. So, what you are seeing on the left hand side is a skeletal structure. And on the right hand side, you just saw a uh, picture here showing uh, uh, the, the one of the members okay, of some length. And we identify or call it as a prismatic member. A prismatic member is one which has the same cross-section over the entire length. Uh, please understand this could be one of the beams or it could be one of the columns. Obviously column uh, we try to put it in the vertical direction. So uh, the, the, uh, each member that we are trying to take in the analysis uh, we call it as a prismatic member is what you need to understand. Now I am just trying to concentrate on the internal forces okay so what is the internal forces that we are looking at in this prismatic member so on the left hand side of the screen so we have the structure a three dimensional structure it is subjected to loads could be in all the three directions vertical horizontal x horizontal y okay loads like that when you have a structure like that okay i would be trying to calculate the internal forces now a structure like this or a, a member may, a, 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 in a three times structure will have uh, many internal forces so we just try to make a list of them okay so we try to say six internal forces is what we are trying to look at in a three dimensional structure okay the first one is the axial force what's an axial force a force an axial force is one which is present along the axis of that member so you can clearly see that red arrow that you saw 
okay that you're seeing right now is an axial force okay and here this could the direction could be either away from the section or towards the section that is it could be tension or it could be compression the second one is the shear force in the vertical direction identified as in y axis to to the reference plane that is considered here so a force acting parallel to the section okay along y okay that is the second internal force so what the third internal force that is the shear force that is a force acting parallel to the plane in the z direction so basically on any section on any cut surface you can clearly see three different types of internal forces linear forces the axial force which acts in the x direction the shear force two shear forces which act uh, in two different parallel direct uh, perpendicular directions one along y and one along z next we have the moments so uh, there are three axes please understand moments uh, can act or about these three axes so the moment about the z axis generally is defined as the bending moment here so the moment about the y axis will make it to bend in the lateral direction so we can even call it as the transverse moment or lateral moment please check that it is acting about the y axis and the last one is the moment which acts about x axis which is defined as the torsional moment so totally there are six internal forces that we can understand in any member at any section in a three dimensional structure okay so uh, the axial force the two shear forces one bending moment one transverse moment and one torsional moment now as i told you uh, one of the one of the objectives to calculate the internal forces the other objective would be to calculate the deformations in the structure for the same problem okay three dimensional body so we're trying to take one member you can just try to check there would be six deformations happening on any cross section that is we just try to take a cross section we can expect six deformations over there one is translation along x okay that point okay can move along x axis can move along y axis translation is nothing but movement mob and translation along z axis so there could be two mo three movements happening uh, at a point so ap apart from that please understand you also the, the, the structure is going to rotate it's going to rotate about the z axis it's going to rotate about the y axis it's going to rotate about the x axis so in general you can expect that six deformations can happen and six internal forces can exist in a three dimensional structure now coming to two dimensional structure the one that we would be dealing in the regular classes okay either in this course or in the course that you would be doing in the next semester and this is of indeterminate structure we talk about only two dimensional structures like planar structures when you call a structure as two dimensional or planar look at a frame that is seen that is that is drawn over there okay you got beams and columns and the columns are support all these things are in the same plane one plane two dimensional and there is one more important point that we need to understand that is loads act on the structure so whatever load that you are trying to see right now acting on the structure is also in the same plane so basically i cannot push this frame okay perpendicular to the screen if i am trying to do that you have to treat it as a three dimensional problem so basically this qualifies as a two dimensional problem basically because the entire structure and the load are in the same plane now considering one of the members here so we normally identify the member again as a prismatic member so prismatic member is one which has the same cross section over the entire length so let's try to understand how many internal forces and how many deformations we are looking at in a member or in a two dimensional problem so we try to say there are only three internal forces because the entire structure and the loads are in the same plane 
we try to say there are only three. So in three dimensional we said six. Let's try to look at the three internal forces. The first one is the axial force which acts along the axis. The second one is the shear force which acts along the y direction. We don't have the shear force parallel to the z axis in this case. So we already finished two internal forces. Now the third one would be the bending moment okay about the z axis if i'm correct you have done analysis of beams in the last semester and you have calculated the shear force and bending moment okay when you have done such examples so for a two dimensional problem you can have a maximum of three internal forces at any section an axial force a shear force and a bending moment okay now coming to the uh, uh, in deformations that we are trying to have here. So there are three deformations that we are trying to have here. Okay, so the deformations okay, that we are trying to have here are the translation happening along the x-axis, the transformation, translation along the y-axis and the rotation about the z-axis. So the associated deformations okay is what we are talking about here so please understand that okay so we are trying to talk about okay three uh, internal forces okay and three deformations okay that we are trying to have here okay in this particular exercise okay so three uh, deformations and uh, uh, three uh, uh, internal forces okay now uh, let us try to understand what are the different types of structures okay we are trying to analyze Okay, in this particular course. One second. Yeah, I wanted the power over here. Okay. Now, uh, in, in in this particular uh, uh, topic, okay, we will be trying to uh, deal with simple beams. Okay, the structures that we are trying to talk about here. Now, what are the simple beams we are trying to talk about? Basically, you have got two different types of simple beams. The first one okay is nothing but a cantilever beam that you're trying to talk about which we call as a determinate beam you also have a simply supported beam over here now if you just try to look at these two beams okay which you already have done and you have done the basic analysis of this last semester if you recollect you had calculated only two internal forces in these beams they are nothing but the bending moment and shear force I did tell you that we can have a maximum of three internal forces but in case of beams such kind of beams we talk about only two internal forces that is bending moment and shear force here the axial force the third internal force axial force okay happens to be very very small negligible so we normally ignore that in the analysis. Now you will be also trying to calculate the deformation in beams in this semester that is in modules 3 and 4. So when we say deformations please understand you will be trying to calculate the translations okay that is movement of a point in y direction okay which we also call as the deflections and the rotations that means the sections will rotate if you just try to draw an elastic curve, try to draw a tangent, okay, the tangent will have some slope. So that means the section rotates. So whatever slope that we have for the profile and the section which rotates are the same. So you will be made to calculate, you will be made to calculate rotations, okay, with respect to about the z-axis. So please remember in case of beams, we, we talk about only two internal forces, bending moments and shear force. We don't talk about axial force. They are very small, we ignore them. And coming to the deformation, we are talking about translations in y direction, which will be calculating in different methods, deflections and, and the rotations. Now coming to the next type of problem that you will be studying in this particular course, that's nothing but a truss. This is basically a special type of a structure, a special type of structure. You are trying to see on the screen some different configurations of 
trusses. I think most of you have seen these structures. They are present in industrial sheds, in roofs. Okay, they normally try to support okay, light roofing sheets. Okay, configurations could be anything as you are trying to see. Okay, so I'm just trying to show you four different types of trusses. Okay, that is the first one, the second one, the third one and the fourth one. So basically, one has to clearly observe that it comprises of number of members, okay, which are connected at the joints. And these joints are generally pin connected. They are pin connected. They are pin connected. And it is supported again at the joints. Okay, the supports that we normally have here are either the hinge supports or roller supports. You cannot have a fixed support here basically because we are talking about all joints are pin joints. Okay, it, is, it can rotate. The members can rotate about that joint okay, freely. So uh, you cannot have a fixed support. So the only supports that are permitted here are hinges and rollers. And another important thing that you are trying to uh, see here is the load is applied only at the joint. The load is applied only at the joint and the load that we are applying here is concentrated load. I think you have tried to do such kind of exercise, okay, right, in the last uh, uh, semester, right, you may have analyzed trusses, correct. So again, this is one more type of truss, okay, that we are trying to talk about. So again, a, 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 all are pin connected, okay, they are structurally straight, okay, the loads are applied only at the joints, they are all prismatic made of the material is homogeneous, isotropic. Now please understand, when you just try to take such kind of members, such kind of structure, and try to apply load only at the joints, you are trying to physically move, MOV, move the joint to new locations. When the joints are moved to new locations, please understand, the members do not bend, okay? They, they, they may get inclined, okay? The inclinations may change, but they still remain straight okay when the joints move and the distance between the joints could have increased or decreased and hence the members are either in tension or compression so one member one force okay is what we are trying to talk about so basically the only force please understand internal force that the members of a pin jointed truss will have is axial force. Though we said maximum of three internal forces can be there in a plane structure. In process we have only one internal force that is axial force. The members do not bend because of the uh, discussion that we made. You are trying to subject the uh, loads only at the joints and all joints are pin connected. So the members essentially do not bend. If it does not bend you don't have bending moment and hence you don't have shear force. So the only internal force we have here is the axial force and uh, each joint uh, will have two deformations, that is two translations, movement of a joint in x direction, movement of the joint in y direction. So this is what you need to understand, okay. So each structure, okay, what are the types of internal forces we have, what are the kind of deformations, okay, that we have in a structure, okay. Now coming to the uh, three hinged arches okay is, this is one more uh, arch, one more uh, structure that we are trying to talk about so the picture on the right hand side shows a three hinged arches so there are three hinges in this particular problem so uh, two at the supports this one support to the left one support to the right so you got two hinges at the supports and you got the third inch generally at the topmost point at the crown and this arch is generally uh, made up of a rigid material. It could be a steel, it could be made of steel, it could be made of reinforced concrete. It's made of rigid body is what we are going to talk about. Okay, and uh, the, the, the arch is loaded, okay, with different types of loads as you can clearly see. This, you have some span, some central rise. And we are trying to analyze such kind of arches in this course. And we are not trying to do this, please understand, any section will have all three types of internal forces. Okay, the axial force, the shear force and the bending moment. And in this case, the axial force has a special name called as 
normal thrust normal means perpendicular thrust is compression in arches predominantly you have compressive forces flowing through that uh, arch rib so the axial force is named as normal thrust and the shear force is named as radial shear because the shear force is not vertical unlike beams it, it just keeps on changing in the along the radius the radial direction so it is identified as radial shear and you got the bending mode. So all three internal forces will be there uh, present in, in any section and you'll be made to calculate all the three internal forces and regarding uh, deformation obviously you'll have two translations and one rotations at any section but in this course we will not be making you to calculate the deformations we will be making you to calculate only the internal forces in, in three inch arches and the final structure that we will be looking at in this particular course uh, cables okay so cables are subjected to concentrated loads uh, a picture shows here where you have got a cable suspended between two supports which are not at the same level you can also have cables at the same level okay same or different levels and it is carrying some concentrated load and you can clearly see the shape of the cable for this particular problem okay and uh, we normally refer this shape as funicular polygon and uh, understand okay so we would be trying to uh, calculate the internal force here and please understand the only internal force a cable will have is an axial force and that to tension a cable is a very flexible uh, member just like a rope or a thread it cannot it cannot resist bending and so no shear it cannot resist compression the only force that a, a thread or a cable can resist is tension so please understand here the problem is much simpler so only one internal force so you'll be made to calculate the uh, internal force in portion ac or ab bc and c okay and coming to the deformation we have got two translation movement in x and movement in y but in this particular course we'll be making you to calculate only the axial force or the tension in various portions of the cable and finally uh, we have one more uh, problem in cables cables carrying udl present on a horizontal span okay uh, without or with stiffening girder so basic profile of the cable is parabolic here parabolic but load is present on this horizontal line okay acb or that that is with or without a beam over there and uh, again in this problem uh, the only force that the main cable with this big one which is suspended uh, carries is okay tension okay so this is what uh, you need to understand one internal force that is axial force and two translations but we don't make you to calculate these things so if you just try to quickly summarize this is all you would be uh, doing in this particular course okay in different modules so you've seen what what is an internal force what is deformation so how many types of uh, internal force and deformations are present in different kinds of structures like beams we've seen okay two internal forces and two deformations okay in case of uh, 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 the next uh, uh, problem that is trusses there's only one axial force internal force okay it could be tension compression and uh, two translations okay and in case of uh, uh, the three inch arches you have all the three internal forces and all the three deformations two translations and one rotation and in cables the only force we have is tension axial force and we've got two deformations two translations so i think we will close this discussion uh, 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 with this uh, uh, slide Okay, so we will try to uh, come back, okay, and then continue uh, the, the presentation, okay, uh, uh, in the next uh, uh, class, okay.